Fire Emblem Awakening was one of my favorite 3DS games of all time. Now, listen, I'm much more of a console gamer, as most of you can see with my channel, than a handheld gamer. But, man, Awakening was just so much fun. I enjoyed Fire Emblem games in the past, don't get me wrong. But something about that title really just stuck with me, and I loved it so much. It was quick, it was a, like a cool battle system. You get to raise your children to fight with you. There was so much cool stuff in that title. So here comes Conquest and Birthright, two separate campaigns, two separate games. The review of this one will focus on Birthright, because I don't have Conquest. Because once you get to Chapter 6 in the both games, you get to choose which side you like to do, and then you can buy the other campaign for just $20. I'll get into that later. Anyway, so is this title Birthright worth picking up right now? We're gonna find out. Which Right off the bat, the game looks great in my opinion. The models are just a bit blocky, and yeah, of course, there's uh, gonna be that on a handheld title, but there's so many different unit types, there's so many different characters, there's a lot of different landscapes, and it's all looking pretty good to me. The portraits of the characters are great, and they're really a good indication of how the emotions are during the dialogue. I love that. It's very anime-ish, but it works. Also, I got a note that you can actually customize characters in this game, and I can't remember if you could do it in Awakening, but putting, like, a bird mask on someone's face is just fun as hell so that's a win also the combat stays fresh and fast if you want to see the whole fight go out and just watch it when you pin against your warrior against theirs or warriors you can watch the entire battle unfold or speed it up or just skip it all together this is called giving you options and this is something that every video game should do the battles remain fun going off each class having an upper hand against another class or weakness also each class can eventually be promoted to a higher stronger class in which case most times you actually have to pick an option of which class you want to be promoted to there's usually two different ones or sometimes just one mattering which class you are promoting after each battle or story chapter, you're sent back to this like central type of area. This is where the Sims part of the game kicks in. You can talk to people, you can spend quality time with people, you can feed your units, you can chill in the hot bathtub area, you can play the lottery, you can do little challenges to get more challenges by betting. I mean, it's just a lot of stuff to do. Each time you're coming back to that central area, it's actually fun again. Also, the support part of this game, meaning when you have your characters interact with others by having them team up in battle, so uh, you get to kind of make them fall in love with each other or become best friends. Not only does it actually help the gameplay, because when you pair people up, they boost their stats, but it's also cool in the story subplot advancements, which I love. The story mode also is two separate games. This isn't Pokemon where there's really no difference to be honest. After chapter 6 in this game, which there's over 20 chapters, you can choose a family to join and that embarks you on a whole new story with all different characters and outcomes. Something I really love when I'm going to go back and replay Conquest instead of Birthright. Something people are actually kind of complaining about because you have to buy more things, but each game is as big as Awakening, so why are we complaining? We're getting quality ass games and then you could buy it just for $20 a whole nother campaign come on that's DLC that's what we want listen the only bad thing I can really think of is sometimes you're gonna get one shot in this game for absolutely no reason the game just wanted to say fuck you since I play on classic meaning your unit just dies they're gone forever I would have to reset don't confuse this with letting a unit just die in terms of sacrificing or you just no way to save them I have properly let my units die Rest in peace, my four units so far. <laughs> but the one-shot bullshit is not cool. No, that's just bullshit. Also, while the story isn't horrible or anything, it's just pretty much okay. There's some interesting moments and twists, but I was far more invested in the side stories in these games when they're just talking to each other than the main story. There could have been, you know, more oomph to it. And I heard that Conquest does that better, so we'll see when I review that one. But for this one, the story was just okay. Listen, honestly, those are the only negatives I can think about the entire game. Handheld games very rarely keep me engaged past the 15-hour mark. 20 
eight hours later and I'm still excited to turn on my 3DS and play some Fire Album. Well, the story isn't amazing, it's still solid, and the gameplay is an absolute blast. Also, I forgot to mention, I love the art design. Fuck the haters. Overall, Fire Elm Birthright is a very strong title, one of the best this year already, and it's going to be worthy of my 9 out of 10. Everybody have a good day. If you liked the review, of course, hit like. If you love me, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Go pick this game up and tell me, in the comments below which one you picked up or vote in the little eye thing that they put because I love polls. They're so fun. Everybody, have a good one.